it's uh, some news that MAGA supporters are punching people in New York, apparently. Um, this is definitely something that's going on and is definitely happening and is real. And, you know, your, your speculation is only bigotry that this is uh, untrue. This is definitely happening. And um, here is a New York Post article uh, talking about it. Carl has covered some of this, but he's not covered the, uh, the MAGA angle yet. And um, it was also quite um, sort of a small amount of coverage. But here are some of the women. Um, let's have a, a listen to some of them. Unfortunately, I'm going to torture you with having to listen to TikTokers. And um, yeah, it is also worth mentioning, you know, TikTokers are America's most valuable asset. And, um, you know, it's a terrible shame that people are punching them. Um, but here, here we you go. Guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my God, it hurts so bad. I can't even talk. Literally, I... There's one. That's all I can stomach of that. Um, Sorry for the interruption. I'm Father Calvin Robinson, and you can watch my Common Sense Crusade at 3 p.m. on Thursdays, only on lotuseaters.com, where you can sign up for as little as £5 per month. Deus fault. Here's another one. So I just got punched in the face walking home. I was literally, like, leaving class. I turned the corner. So she was like literally punched in the face. You can see her bruise. And um, yeah, it seems like this is genuine. I suspect this she, is not she was chasing. actually literally punched in the face rather than figuratively punched in the face. Yes. Um, they, nor they normally get that wrong. And like, that makes me want to punch. Maybe she, maybe she misused the word literally mm -hmm. just before she was punched because that would be understandable. I'm sure that the residents of New York are just really pedantic about grammar. That's yes, what's going that, on. That could be it. I, I like literally have my skin crawling from hearing people talk like that. Um, you, you figuratively have your skin crawling. No, it, 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 my skin is crawling off of me. It, it's, it's got no. sentience of its own. No, no. I'm, I'm saying it wrong on purpose, all right. Um, but no, I, I genuinely don't think that they should be punched. However annoying uh, right. the, the TikTok mode of speaking is, um, there is also another example here of uh, a less annoying person talking so about it. By some man on the she's almost smiling like, about it, so man. she's a good sport. She can take a punch. Holy um, But um, I quite like that one. Yeah, she seemed a bit more normal. Uh, she didn't yes. have the, the whole social media mannerisms that you know you see, yes. where it's over exaggerated. You know, they're they're really farming for that engagement. They're like every hand yes. movement is is corresponding to some sort of word. Um, but yes, Carl has covered this. Um, here we are. Here's um, the New York Post talking about it. Um, here's another woman with a black eye. It says, uh, Michaela. Uh, Tony Nato, uh, 27 from Brooklyn, was punched in the face Monday afternoon by a man over six feet tall on the corner of 14th Street and 5th Avenue. She went to the emergency room on Tuesday and was told she had a concussion. So obviously that's horrible. I don't mm. wish anyone to be punched, um, you know, particularly women over men. Um, how, how on earth has the New York voting system ended up in a situation where this can happen? I have no idea, Dan. Um, I, I wonder what situation could have led to such a thing. Um, Female suffrage. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but I've had to. Uh, no, I have to say it. No, uh, uh, maybe I'm being a bit harsh, but un unmarried women voting just mm, not sure about that. This this day and age, I think voting is such a waste of time that well, you know, everyone doing it. You know, everyone can waste their time. Um, one thing I thought was interesting about this: a man over six feet tall, and um, I was thinking to myself, what 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 people tend to be quite tall, over six feet tall. Um, and when I think of tall people, I think of, say, basketball players, you know, NBA teams, and they tend to all be tall, right? Um, yes. And um, I was thinking, what sort of thing in NBA teams do they tend to have in common? Um, yeah. Well, the, the, the numbers. The, yeah, they're all, they're all basketball players, obviously. Yes. You know, they, they must have, you know, if they're tall, they must also have big feet. Um, they must be good at basketball, obviously. Um, these sorts of things, right? Um, but I, I just couldn't get to the bottom of it. Um, but there is a, a one of these TikTokers. Um, after she got punched, she had the, um, you know, the cognizance left to try and get a picture of the the gentleman. Um, here she is posting a, this screenshot. Um, a, a fella in a red jacket. Um, that's his most discernible feature in jeans. Um, obviously, yeah. it's difficult to tell. Is, is that what a beanie? Kind of uh, I'm I not, can't make it I, out. I don't know. It, it's difficult to tell, isn't it? Um, yes. Hmm. But uh, here is an example here from 
Uh, this was June of last year. So this isn't necessarily a new phenomenon. It can go back a little bit further than recently. It's just that the media have been paying more attention to this spree of women getting punched. And here is a screenshot of uh, a person who, uh, you know, the, the footage is so grainy. I can't make out who this, this gentleman is. That's the woman. That's the, that's the woman there? No, the woman in the background there. That's the actual puncher. <laughs> oh, plot twist. Oh. Yes, that could be interesting, couldn't it? Did you watch the video? Did you but, find... uh, Yeah. They, oh, I mean, see, she's they're... punching him with yes. her long black arm. <laughs> That's right. She she was actually the culprit here. Um, so this this clearly unidentifiable gentleman. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's so, so. All we know at this point is that it is a man. Mm -hmm. Right. Fair enough. Well, there has been an arrest. Um, oh, right. Fringe political candidate who ran for New York mayor is apparently been accused, and um, this is all the way back in March, of sucker punching TikTokers. Um, he just really dislikes the use of Chinese spyware. He's just such an American patriot. So much so that he has a Trump flag behind him, even though he didn't run as a Republican or associated with Trump. He ran as an in independent. This is um, uh, Skiboki um, Stora. I, I don't know how to say is that. Is that name. his own name? Skibocky I don't know. Stora. Is skibbity toilet, skibbity bop. Um, yeah, this is the the gentleman that has uh, he's appearing in court, and uh, yes, it, this might yeah. it might have something to do with a certain phenomenon of people just randomly punching people and, in the and street. He, he, he's he, an independent Trump, -er, is he or something? Or well, he ran as an independent. He was unaffiliated with Trump in any way, but he had a right. Trump flag behind him. I don't know why. Oh right, oh right. Well, this is MAGA country then. Yeah, he's um, just your garden variety Trump supporter, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you can make lots of generalizations about this one guy who, uh, mm. as they say, is a fringe political candidate. Um, never mind previous stories, you know, where there are viral images showing people of color as anti-Asian perpetrators. This is, what, of course, when you had people just randomly punching Asian people. And in fact, I, co I covered a story um, relatively recently of a guy who went on Joe Rogan's podcast uh, who was, uh, you know, a, a person of color, so to speak, um, whose son got started a fight when he was 14 with, a, I think he was a 24-year-old Asian student. He ran into traffic to escape this, uh, this person of color, this young 14-year-old, and got hit by a car and died. So this phenomenon yeah. has been going on for a while of um, these, um, you know, poor persecuted people of color just randomly punching people for no reason. Um, and I think it all ties in together, you know, women, Asian people. Um, but po point of point point of order. Um, mm -hmm. uh, are Asian people people of color, or, or are their grades too high? I'm not. I'm never quite sure. I'm how afraid that works. they do too well. They're actually more right. white than white people. Um, oh, and, I see. Okay, fair enough. Yes. Um, you may remember people lumping in Asian people with white people, saying they're they're basically the same. They're, they're exactly yes. the same. They're just as complicit in our oppression. Slightly better at maths, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, interesting. So for the sake of uh, you know, transparency, here is another one of the wanted people. So uh, if you live in New York and you see this man, if you're a woman, he might punch you. Um, also, you know, how, how would you describe him to those listening at home? Uh, perhaps Hispanic, maybe Middle Eastern, uh, dark hair, sort of swarthy. Right. Um, he's wearing a uh, a Stitch from Lilo and Stitch hoodie with a New York Yankees uh, button-up shirt over the top. Right. Interesting look. Classic New Yorker then. Uh, yeah, well, he, he's, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really know what look he's going for here, but at least you know he's in the New York area because he's got that shirt on. Yes. Maybe it's a cover. Who knows? Um, this is the article I wanted to talk about. Men punching random women in New York, a desperate last gasp of the male rage, fueling MAGA. <laughs> right, let's see how they back this one up. Uh, well, um, what I always like to do when I, I see a headline like this is look at, um, before I read the body of the article, look at who wrote it. Um, because, you know, it tells you a little bit about why they might be writing the article. And um, here she is. Um, Amanda. Amanda. Yeah. She's got man in her name, so that obviously makes her mad as uh, a feminist. Um, she to be writes fair, from a liberal I mean, perspective. I, I don't want to offend anyone listening, but I've never met a, a sane Amanda. That, that <laughs> could just be me. I know what, what you mean. What about Amanda uh, Hug and Kiss? 
<laughs> Great Simpsons reference. Uh. Um, so, yeah, she writes for Slate, The Guardian, and Salon. Um, so, what a, a right. trio of outlets to write for. Um, raised in Texas um, in a household. Um, but she wrote this book, uh, Troll Nation, How the Right Became Trump-Worshipping Monsters Set on Rat-Ething Liberals, America and the Truth Itself. Is that true? That, ooh, that's interesting. I should read that. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting title, isn't it? it? It suggests to me a certain amount of... I quite like it. <laughs> These fucking rats. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> what? <laughs> it, it suggests to me a certain amount of level-headedness and, you know, decorum about a political discourse being discussed within that that sort of, uh, you know, sensible level-headed title, doesn't it? it? It suggests to you that this person is someone to be taken seriously. Look at that discount, though. A whole $1.50 off. Whoa, I don't know. What a bargain. But um, here are some of their articles. Um, evangelicals won't be bothered about Trump, but yes, Trump, obviously the article we're talking about. MAGA, Trump, uh, Trump, uh, Trump, uh, GOP. She sort of has a theme, doesn't she? Uh, yeah, uh, Republicans and Lara Trump. Um, and you're Trump. Not, you're not even skipping any. You're just, this is just literally article after article about. Mm-hmm. How basically right wingers are awful. Josh Hawley there as well is not Trump, but it is a Republican. Ooh. And then again, Trump. So I think we might have stumbled onto someone who has made a career of so, so it, Trump here. Are any of these people actually still employed? Because I thought all of all of these type basically couldn't get jobs anymore. They're having to learn to code or something. Or... Well. <laughs> It turns out that formulaic articles are better written by AI and they're actually uh, better yeah. argued by AI. You know, things that aren't actually sentient, which uh, says a lot about the journalists they're replacing. Because, of course, um, was it Vox? I covered this, so I should know. But I'm pretty sure Vox um, hi- replaced some of their journalists with AI before they... Nobody knew. Well, actually, their, um, their stock price went up 12% <laughs> in response to that. So, yes... It is confirmed AI is better than leftist journalists. But let's go to this article because I want to read some of the insanity um, in here. So it says, men are punching random women. Oh, I should probably scroll down uh, so you can read it as well. Men are punching random, random women on the street of New York City. As usual with these kinds of diffuse and chaotic stories, there is much that is unknown. Um, how she can assert that it's all MAGA supporters, I don't know. Including how often this is happening, how many people are involved, whether it's all coordinated. You mean random people punching people on the street is somehow some sort of conspiracy? They're all meeting together and just like, how can we punch women in, you know, in coordinated attacks? I'm sure that's what's happening. But what we do know is already alarming. CNN reports that dozens of women have discussed being victims of social media oh, and formally interviewed. <laughs> Victims on social media. Sorry, that's a Freudian slip there. Formally interviewed six of them. NBC News reports that there have been at least three arrests. CBS News reports that NYPD released images last week of a fourth man wanted for allegedly punching a woman in Union Square. Even reality TV star Bethany Frankel says she's been victimized. So what this journalist could have done at this point was clicked on those links of the the articles she um, hyperlinked, some of the ones we've been through already, and looked at some of the, uh, the pictures of the people that are either accused or wanted, and perhaps made some conclusions about them rather than just saying that they were these Trump supporters, you know, that just go around punching women because, you know, they feel like it, you know? It's just like, damn you, you, vote, you voted for Hillary, I bet. Here you go, here's my right hook. Um, and it carries on to say, um, women report being assaulted by men of different races and ages. And when they say this explicitly, like, right. oh, it's, it's, you know, it's just a, a trend that trans, uh, transcends all, you know, just, demographics just to clarify and ages. On decent, different races. So people of French origin, German, Italian. The Amish. Mm. Are coming yes, out the country. Amish. I'm sure there are some Laotians there, maybe yes. some uh, Papua New Guineans. Yes. Um, perhaps uh, there are some Inuit. Um, yes. A splattering of Northern Europeans and the occasional Buddhist, that kind of thing. Yeah, because Buddhists are known for violence, aren't they? Yes. Um, the alleged victims are mostly young and pretty, and most of them say they were minding their own business when they were attacked. Um, I think most sucker punches are that way. I've been sucker punched before, actually. 
Okay. I was in a nightclub um, talking to some people, and this very short black guy hop, literally hopped in the air to reach me because I'm very tall and clipped me. And I just thought someone bumped into me because it didn't really hurt. And then I looked around, and then he was just like, What are you talking to my girlfriend for? And I was talking to a bloke. Um, so I don't. And then I heard this really fat woman saying, No, not him. That was a perfect impression. Um, and then he disappeared into the crowd like Hannibal Lecter at the end of Silence of the Lambs. And then I said to the bouncer, hey, this, this short black guy punched me. And he's just like, well, that's a bit racist, isn't it? What am I going to do? <laughs> just stop any black person walking in. And I was just like, but he's really short. There can't be that many tiny black people. And he's just like, well, I'm not letting you in now anymore. You know, it was ridiculous. But anyway. All right. Uh, you know, all bouncers need to be purged. Um, uh, sorry. That's a joke, by the way. Although I don't like bouncers. Um, but anyway, it carries on to say... Um, Others were speaking to friends or daydreaming, whatever they were doing, they were just living their lives, and that, it seems, is what enraged their assailants. I, I don't know about that. Just like, do you ever see people just living their daily life and it fills you with anger? I don't think I've ever felt that. Um, no. Obviously, then, I'm not going around punching women, but... Then I haven't been to New York for a long time. So. That's true, yeah. Um, maybe New York's just such a hostile environment that you just get this pent-up rage at people minding their own business. Yeah. Um, it's not part of a greater problem of you know, just indiscriminate crime. Um, whatever the scale of this problem eventually turns out to be, it's not surprising that these stories have gone viral and captured the public's imagination. While it rarely turns to violence, most women who spend much time walking around in public have experience with men who berate them for paying attention to something other than the man who is now, often out of nowhere, spewing invectives. And uh, I can tell she's recently bought a thesaurus while writing this because she could have just said, you know, expletives. Swear words, cussing, if you're, you know, particularly American. Um, but no, she went with invectives. Um, our modern era that often manifests with men who are infuriated at women for looking at their phones. I've, I've literally never heard of that. Have either of you heard of men getting angry at women for looking at their phones? Ever? I mean, I get mildly annoyed with the wife doing it when we're trying to watch something. Because I know... But you like, don't punch her, though. Couch. No, but I just know that two minutes later, it's going to be, why is that happening? It's like, well, if you watch the <laughs> bloody movie, all right, all I'm, I'm completely on side. Answered. I've experienced this before, yeah. Yes. I know exactly what you mean. But never, no, never punched her over it, no. <laughs> um, but I'm old enough to remember when I would get yelled at for reading books in public. Nerd. Oh, I knocked my microphone there. Um, sorry about that. Um, whatever the excuse the angry man concocts, the impetus is always the same. But the eyes of a woman are directed at someone or something that is not him, and he is indignant over it. And I think what's going on here with this journalist is she has invented a straw man in her head, and of course it is also uh, you know a man, so she hates them, and she's therefore very angry at this hypothetical man that exists in reality for certain, and is now attacking the the thoughts of this man that she has definitely not imagined and definitely exists. So he will make sure that he has no choice but to look at him either by getting in her face or, in these alarming New York cases, punching her. If he cannot capture her adoring gaze, well, he will make her stare at him in fear. And I don't think that from the pictures we've seen and, and from the accounts, that that's actually what's going on. I don't think they're clamoring for their attention. In fact, they seem pretty indifferent to them, hence why they're punching them. Yes. Um, you know... Perhaps I'm not the biggest lady man, ladies' man in the world, but I've never really thought that punching women is a good way to get their attention. Um, in fact, it's a good way to make them hate you. Uh, and so it seems like a counterintuitive strategy. I know I've heard of worse, but still. Um, these stories resonate as well because the nation is having a moment of increasingly unhinged male fury at women for daring to have lives that are centered around something other than catering to a man's every whim. There's no bitterness here whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Unleashed by Donald Trump and the MAGA movement, there's an upswell of loud male entitlement shouting at us from every corner. This, These are, uh, sorry. This, this woman badly needs a man to tell her to just go and make a sandwich and be quiet mm -hmm. because she's just waiting for that moment. Wait until you see what her Twitter profile picture is. You're in for a treat. Oh, good. But um, we see male fans of Jordan Peterson who clamor to his events to hear him croak out of out a just-so story about how lobsters justify their faith in male dominance. That's not even what that means. What the hell? The, the lobster thing was that 
your your position in a social hierarchy oh, no, I, I, affects your posture no, I, and how I, you conduct I, yourself. I, I get that, but it's not that lobsters. Ju- <laughs> She's taken the Kathy Newman line, not realizing how humiliated Kathy Newman was in that interview, and I mean, she, she was just a bit angry and lefty before. But she's kind of going off the rails now. I mean, to be fair, I mean, <laughs> well, she started on the rails, but still, yeah. Or the rise of trad wives online who make a living pretending they're unemployed and housebound, or Ben Shapiro setting fire to a Barbie doll because he can't stand that a blockbuster comedy starring a woman is about anything but her quest for male affection. Yeah, it kind of was, though. Yeah, it's a bit of a stretch. Or MAGA pundits telling lies about birth control in hopes of tricking women into having babies before they're ready. And that's not just MAGA pundits, right? You know, there are lots of questions about birth control, hormones that run off and go into the, the supply that affect fertility, as well as changing um, women's preferences in lots of studies, yeah. wide scale, bipartisan studies. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to trick women into having babies before they're ready. I think that's generally a bad thing. Um, well, especially since every possible societal pressure is put on them to defer the decision as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Just to do economics on that, the economics of children, that's worth watching. So it carries on to say, all conservatives writing op-eds that blame women for male loneliness, telling women they must self-sacrifice to relieve male pain by marrying Donald Trump voters. I I think that that's a bit of a straw man. All right-wing men yelling because Taylor Swift has cats or because she dates a hunky vaccinated NFL player instead of, I don't know, having babies with a guy in ill-fitting cargo shorts. But I think most of the people criticizing Taylor Swift, that was due to her endorsing Biden and being in her... Was it mid thirties and still not having children? I mean, who cares about what Taylor Swift does personally? I don't really care. No, I, but it's still a, a sort of straw man. It goes on to talk about um, second wave feminism getting thrown out and how things are cyclical. And Limp Biscuit and George W. Bush are roped in and trucker caps for some reason. And she goes on again. Oh, you know, not to sound too much of a misogynist, but she is sort of going on a bit of a, an irrelevant rant. She's sort of just getting her feelings out. Um, But one big difference between male tantrums we're experiencing now and the backlash of old, this time women aren't really playing along. Few may, maybe, especially if they can get a piece of that sweet trad wife income. But in the past, backlashes tended to draw large numbers of women along, or at least convince them to silence their opinions, lest they be labeled a man-hater. In more conservative parts of the country in the early 2000s, it manifests as widespread shaming of women for having sex before marriage. But women tended to do that more than men, normally. Women are the, the, the enforcers of women's own standards a lot of the time. Mm. It is not normally men that are going around shaming women, although it does happen. No, especially not if they're getting some. Yeah, um, but it wasn't a great time in more liberal areas where women put up with hipster sexism to get the prize of being called a cool girl. This doesn't seem like bitterness whatsoever. And it goes on and on and on. And it says, the rise of Margaret is fueled by misogyny, blah, blah, blah. But it's less a backlash than a tantrum, a rage explosion by men who want to restore their dominance but fear that this time women won't buckle to their bullying and that's why they're just indiscriminately punching them apparently. This rash of men punching women in New York City captures this moment in a dark way. We don't even need to know their names or faces to know that men who do this are losers. Well, I mean, I do agree with that. Lashing out because they've learned that actually women don't owe them anything just because they're men. This is all just, there's no actual evidence provided here. This is just anger. This is a very bitter lady. I mean, so, it's pure ideology, frankly. It is, yeah. Is, women are getting punched in New York. I won't look at who's doing it or why. I will just make up that it's because men hate women and the women need to rise up and do what? Because you're still going to get punched. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, just nothing. There's nothing there. Well, women in New York need to rise up and stop voting. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you vote for criminals and you get crime. And... Uh, yeah. It's also true that women aren't suffering in silence, but telling stories without shame or self-blame. There's something nakedly pathetic about punching women. I agree with that. As scary as it is for the victims, it's not like the catcalling or groping of old, which disguised male aggression as a mere over-exuberance of lust. This is the last gasp of men who, unable to justify their sexism in any way, must resort to brute force. Yet even then, they're unable to shut women up. Well, I mean, that last point is true. Yeah, we're not able to shut Amanda up, are we? No. Um... But uh, I wanted to go now to uh, just to point out something about New York. Uh, all these MAGA supporters in New York, you, know, you may see, you know, uh, actually, 
America, sort of a sea of red. And then you start zooming in on New York, you notice it's a bit blue. It's very blue. Um, yeah, there's not that many Trump supporters in New York, really. So I mean, on the on the outskirts, but this is this, yeah. this whole storyline has not been about the outskirts. Who the hell is living in those red dots? There's two red dots. They're surrounded. Someone, we need to go in there and liberate them. Broken arrow. Give them their support. <laughs> Tie. Yeah, look, some of them are uh, like ninety percent Trump. So one would presume that these are like the the, the bankers. Well, all the I don't know. Uh, bankers, but left the place. Yes. Do they really? Yeah. Well, Blimey. Well, south of Broadway. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. These Broadway people? votes Trump. There we go. That's the unwritten news here. But um, yeah, he's for Trump. Yes. As uh, w- actually, let's uh, before we go on to her Twitter, what are the odds on what her profile picture is? Think f- think that she's a feminist, right? What what would she have in a feminist symbol? No, that's too. She's too gonna boring. be wearing one of those pussy hats, is she? No. Is that a man? Uh, uh, is it the man in charge that we can talk to? No. Uh. No idea, Josh. It's a cat. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> um, and the reason I'm on here is to show you that uh, hearing the, uh, the backlash, she has not learned her lesson. And uh, wh- where is it? Um, there we go. Man, I knew this um, article was super true when I wrote it, but the, the hateful emails MAGA men are sending doubly prove it. Hit dogs, as they say, holler. Oh, men, just know that your angry emails are going unread. If I see a man's name on the email and mention of punching women, I know that you're going to say what you're going to say and will delete without a read. I can see that you feel seen and do not like it. Um, there are two reasons your misogynistic, angry responses will go unread. One, as noted in the article, men are not entitled to a woman's time or energy. None of this has anything to do with misogyny or feminism or anything no. of the sort. We know the people who are doing the punching, mm-hmm. and, and they're not white Nick towels. <laughs> Shut up. And she says, I can see the traffic and know you didn't read a word before you decided you were mad. Um, well, I read the uh, most of the whole article. I've read it through a few times and I'm still annoyed that someone would write such a baseless article. There's no evidence here. I mean, we at least looked at some of the pictures of the accused people, looked at some historic president, looked at, you know, well, we didn't look at the, the crime rates in New York, but we know um, yes. who was overrepresented there. Uh, so I would like to end on a meme. It's not exactly, you know, the most imaginative thing, but I think it encapsulates, uh, the journalistic class perfectly. Am I out of touch? No, it's the Trump voters who are wrong. And, uh, that about says it really. Yes. Uh, journalists, you know, are willing to force ideology down your throat, even if there's absolutely not a shred of evidence to suggest it. We appreciated that episode from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters. You can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all premium content that's on the site, such as the Epoch series, this episode on the art of Michelangelo. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Twitter at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Thank you and goodbye.